I thought I'd do a quick uh, external tour of the TBM 900 and we could take a look at some of the stuff I look at when I'm doing a pre-flight inspection before we do a trip. So when I first get to the plane, I'm usually going right to the door, getting it opened. So just pop this handle down, open it up, fold the little ladder out. Uh, not every TBM has the uh, this kind of cockpit door, this pilot door up front, um, but it's becoming a pretty popular option in the newer ones. So there's some inspection stuff you do inside. I'm going to skip that for now. But uh, one of the things that I do right off the bat is uh, open up this little cubby where I just keep sort of the airplane supplies. And so I take all the covers off. Here's a couple of the covers here. Covering this exhaust stack, this red plastic stuff. We've got some in some of these inlets here. And uh, there's a few other pieces, stuff covering the pitot tubes, little plugs for the static ports. I'll leave those in today, but this is where they all live uh, when they're not on the exterior of the airplane. Up in here as well, we've got a tow bar up top. I've just got some cleaning supplies, some extra oil. There's uh, some fuses and bulbs in here. And uh, that's really it. It's got a nice little convenience light that uh, turns on when you open that door, which is, I'm sure, handy at night. And uh, from there, I usually get down here. All right, now I've got the GPU plugged in. I also have a battery minder. So uh, the gentleman that owned this before me put in this little extra connection with the, the smaller connection there. And that keeps the, uh, the battery happy when you're not using it. And then the bigger red connection is just hooked up to my little portable GPU, which is not strong enough to start the engine with, but it's great when you're just playing with the avionics and so forth. It'll power, the, power those up without burning down the battery. Down here, we have a little access door here, a little quarter turn. And it's got a mirror that you can kind of see and a light. That lights up in there and you can look for that little white thing we see there and see if it's popped out. And if so, that indicates that your fuel filter was bypassed because it got clogged for some reason. And you need to get that looked at. Sometimes I have a little trouble working this back. Okay, I'm also just sort of checking the condition of stuff down here. There is a uh, place to test the fuel right there. And then I will open up the uh, engine compartment and I'll set this down so you can see that a little better. So in here, I'm just checking the condition of everything. This is the uh, battery box down here. If you wanted to, you could take this little plate off the smooth part and uh, actually unscrew kind of a large bolt in there to disconnect the battery. But uh, I usually don't worry about that. I just have it plugged up to the little battery minder down there. And then down here, you can see sort of that red and green area and you can actually check an oil oil level level value right here and it's a little bit over the red right now which is a good spot for it and then this little mirror up here right there lets you look at the oil cap and you can kind of see it there and make sure that that looks like it's secured properly and then like any engine you're looking around for leaks stuff that may have come loose somehow you can check these belts in here there's one here my finger on it and there's another one just a little bit past it and basically just try to turn those a little bit make sure they don't turn too easily or not easily enough so that's pretty much it for this I'll leave it up for now of course the covers will be removed by this point I go around make sure the spinner looks good all, all the screws are there Check all the blades, make sure there's no big nicks. 
or anything weird going on there. I look in the inlet cover and the main inlet uh, where this cover is now and make sure that the inertial separator looks fine. There's no, no damage around any of this stuff. Checking the nose wheel, the strut on it, <clears throat> making sure that everything looks good, making sure there's no toe pins left in here uh, that would uh, potentially cause a problem when you're trying to extend the gear later. It's just like a little metal metal knob that the uh, tow bar would make use of on the ground when folks are moving it around. So we'll check that. Of course, looking at the tire inflation and all that. Open up the other side of the cowling and you can look at the hydraulic fluid, brake fluid, uh, and just make sure there's no leaks or anything weird there. And then I'm just checking the boot on the front of the wing. Again, landing gear, making sure there's plenty of of the strut visible, generally over three fingers is just fine. Looking in here, it's probably a little dirty right now, but there's the actuator. The gear. And the 900 has a uh, unique gear door in that uh, this little piece is, is extra to reduce drag and flight and give you, I don't know, a couple more knots. It's always good to make sure nobody slammed a chalk into the, trying to get it onto the tire smashed up your your cover there stall warning that's heated checking the cap making sure that that was put on securely and that this little vent here isn't clogged up looking at the lights making sure nobody's broken the lens anything weird like that this little static uh, wick cover would be removed normally. Checking the freedom and the movement of the ailerons here. And these and the TBM have a spoiler that comes up with the up aileron and uh, that helps with more roll control authority. It's a relatively small aileron compared to the size of the airplane. It's maybe uh, twice the length of my forearm so it's not really long but this helps spoil lift on the wing that's going down to give you a little extra control. But conversely, the flap is huge. That's uh, probably, I don't know, six times longer than the aileron maybe. Very long, helps you get a nice slow stall speed for landing. So oftentimes I'll have the flaps down to check that out and make sure all the uh, lubrication and grease in there is good in here oxygen service port and um, here you can hook up to get oxygen tank filled up There's sort of a master valve off on a little toggle switch in there and a, uh, a gauge to make sure that it's uh, full which it looks good one of the first questions I asked when I was getting a tour of a TBM was what are all these little little divot things in the airplane with the yellow arrows pointing to them. And uh, there's one there. There's another one here. They're kind of peppered throughout. And what I was told is that they can, uh, when it's in the shop, they can put uh, a laser alignment tool and use those as references and make sure that nothing's been twisted up or that the airframe is all lined up appropriately. So there's little reference points all around that they can check against pretty interesting. All right, I think this one's an air conditioning uh, intake vent here. And then these are the, uh, the strakes that just help a little bit with your lateral stability. Got some antennas under here for comm and whatnot, transponder. Just making sure that these all look good and not dinged up. There's the right side static port. Drives the uh, co-pilot side. There's Actually, it's redundant just for the co-pilot. And then in here, got an ELT. It's the 400-something uh, megahertz, I forget. It's the new variety that uh, uses a GPS receiver to give you a better search and rescue signal. Hopefully, people can find you faster. And then we look at the boots up here. Check the tail, the vertical tail as best you can. 
and just look at it, the rudder looks normal. It's it's pretty far up there. One thing we look for here as well, you lift the elevator up. You look in here, these little rubber boots, and uh, make sure that the drain holes are pointing down and not up so that water can get out of there if it's sitting in the rain. You don't want those to freeze up. There's the tail. I believe this whole piece is a redesign for the 900 to, again, make it a little more efficient, a little faster. And another static port uh, there for the pilot side. And then here is the uh, main door. Open that up by just moving that lever. stair here that you can just let drop. It does a nice job of uh, stopping itself. And I'll do an interior tour in, a, in another video. I'll show you how this door closes. Then you just lift this, lift this back up. That brings in the handrail with it here. the push button to close it down and then just kind of give it a little bit of inner push rotate the handle bring it down and you need to make sure that it seats well in here if you have it kind of kicked out a little bit see that uh, sometimes it'll want to stay up a little bit and it'll give you a door warning message on the panel let me check to make sure these are green. There's five of those. I'll show you that you got the door nicely closed. Can I repeat the checks on this wing? Look at the gear and so forth. This is the uh, radar pod here. And that's really it. That's the exterior tour.